emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Uh, gang, Colin here, Festa 67 67's workshop, and welcome to part two of the eModels build of the Suzuki X-Star GSX RR20. And we're going to be doing the body panels, sub-assemblies and primer on this one. So I'm just going to sand this little bit of fairing and start denubbing a few more bits and bolts so that we can continue the build-up of this bike. And uh, this build, folks, is for eModels, who are kindly sponsoring this build. And you can visit them at eModels.co.uk. Have a looky loo, install, see what you fancy. Grab one of these kits if you want to build along with me. The link is in the uh, comments below the video. Uh, grab yourself some bits and bobs, and you can build one of these along with Festa, folks. So we're literally now going around body panels, getting rid of all the nubs off of all of those in anticipation of getting a lot of this primed, hopefully at the end of this episode. So this is the sort of iggledy-piggledy stage, really, of the builds. You know, you just sit there with your scraper, bit of sanding, bit of scraping, bit of denubbing, just to tidy everything up so that when you shoot your first coat of primer, you can then see any imperfections and go back at them. So that's all we're doing at the moment. And we'll carry on denubbing these little bits and bobs. I think this is the stand. So start gluing this together now. And I'm going to continue building the kit up into primable sub assemblies that will then be quite easy to scoot together when we continue further on in the build folks so i'm gonna go sort of randomly through the instructions i might jump forward a bit then come back and do a bit on the other assemblies but i tend to look at getting things like the frame the stand engine things like that done in sub assemblies and then when i come to paint I can prime the frame and the body panels quick and then I join them together so that I can do the decaling and then that goes off and gets its 2k clear coat and whilst that's all drying I then go back to sorting out the rest of the build up so I do do it a little bit iggledy piggledy and you'll see more of that in the next episode so hopefully it will give you a few ideas on how to do your builds yourself as folks it just makes things a bit easier. So we'll carry on denubbing bits and bobs. Um, like I say, there's going to be folks out there that haven't done denubbing before, so bear with me whilst I show the noobs what to do. And then we can start gluing bits and bobs now to the radiator, all the pipage and things like that. And then I will tend to prime this, and then I put down the color that has got the most coverage if that makes sense so if this is a titanium silver and then there's just a few little bits of rubber black i do the whole lot in one color and then i'll come back and i'll brush paint the rest of it so there'll be a little bit of detail painting later on in the series where you you see some more of that so it just makes it easier for me you set the booth up shoot your colours, your main colours and then like I say you can sit there late at night, nice cup of tea and an airy stick and just have a nice little fettle so carry on building this up and this is going to be done mainly in acrylics apart from the body panels, they'll be done in the TS Tamiya sprays uh, just to get a better paint match so I'll put um, when I film the spraying what i'll do is i'll put up the colors that i'm using at that moment in time as little text pop-ups so you get to see what colors uh, i'm using at that stage but for the moment we'll just carry on the build up get the little edges of the radiator shroud in place like so the end caps get in there little squeeze just to let the glue do its thing 
nice bit of extra thin does the job it's a welding glue at the end of the day folks and it will scoot along them seams capillary reaction and it will bond together what you need so on these I just scoot a little bit in the little tray there press it together little tiny uh, squeeze he says as it falls back off so I'll just pop that back on like so there you go so I'll make the mistake so that you don't have to folks and then we'll just give that a little little squish like that got to do the sound effects as well peeps just screw a little bit more along there just to let that have a bit of uh, purchase and then we put this pipe section on just like that there you go and then give that a little press just to make sure that that's adhering like that and then that will be the radiator more or less done as its own sub assembly then and then that will just click straight in onto the frame at a later stage and then we'll just go around with a buffer just to clean up any edges that look a bit dodgy and then we'll leave that to cure a little bit of extra thin along there now and that will melt back in any sanded plastic and fill in any gap and as you can see there you go done so we've got the mug guard now now although the rest of the panels were done without a seam they still do the mug guards as two two halves so we're going to join it together give it an ease and a squeeze and then hopefully oh, we can get rid of the seam i don't think it'll be too bad a seam but you never know but we'll do a bit of work on it but for the moment we'll just give it a squish and then I should put that to one side and let the glue go off and then I'll come back at that and we'll do a bit of de-seaming and if I need to do any filling I can but it will, <clears throat> excuse me it'll just let us see whether or not we have too much and I tend to just go around put as much glue underneath as I can just to really let it start warming up and welding and then I just come across the seam at the back there pinch that together and as you squish it you end up pushing out a little bead of plastic it looks like a weld line and then that's what you sand down and smooth down and that's what fills the gap and then we got the brake disc covers here now they're carbon fiber on the real bike so I've got a sheet of uh, decal carbon fiber decal so I will be doing these as the carbon fiber originally I was going to do them black but the more I looked at it and thought about it I just thought well I've got a sheet of decal there why not uh, let's Let's put a bit of decal on there, a bit of carbon. You know, the guys at E-Models are good enough to let me build for them. The least I can do is put maximum effort in, uh, into the build and do a little bit of a little bit of an extra for them just to make it look a bit more authentic, peeps. So that'll be covered in a future episode. We'll sit and do the carbon fibering on all the, all the carbon fibre bits and let you see how it's done. But for the moment we'll just put these together and then they'll be primed sprayed black and cleared ready for the carbon to go on top at a later stage you've got the both halves of the brake caliper there start putting them together and just off shot where the red plier handles are i've got uh, a little row of parts holders and i should just Put these on sticks with the crocodile clips on the end uh, they'll all be lined up and all the black bits go on one and all the silver on another and just helps it to uh, make it easier when i'm painting so that's why i'm reaching off shot in case you wonder it's because i've got my little parts trees 
just off camera. So I'll just glue that together and give it a squish. Squishy, 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 look squishy. Let the glue do its thing. And then we can move on to the next bits. So we'll just put that on the clip, like so. Bosh. And there you go. Get a hold of that. Have you a bit of him? Right, let's have a looky loo what's next, shall we? Dum da da dum da da dum 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 da da dum 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 Yeah, let's get the other one of those off. Get that built. I've still got quite a fair bit to do. Got all the fuel tank and all of that gubbins to go on. So I will be sitting and doing that as well. Let's quickly look at these and make sure that they're all right. And then got a little bit of glue along the back edge there. Like so. Slabber it on there. And then just pop that together. Right. Let's have a looky loo at what we got here. Now this is the rear seat surround. Um, for the bike. And again it's a two piece. Uh, main section and then you've got like the shroud that goes around the seat and the bracket so this is quite a little quite a few little bits that uh, you've got to assemble to make this the one piece but once it's all done and de-seamed you can um, have a pretty pretty nice piece but bear in mind and keep an eye on the instructions folks because it does point out that one of the seams is deliberately there on the bike so you don't want to sand it and smooth it out so have a good looky loo at your instructions just to make sure that you don't feel that seam in i very nearly did and i wouldn't want you guys to make that mistake uh, let's see whether I can find it uh, it's in section 26 peeps so if you scoot forward to there and have a quick read and it's in the grey box and it shows you a side view of this shroud with the seam that you need to leave in place all I did with that seam uh, was use the pencil and drew round it so that I could um, see which one it was. But we'll carry on building it, get it all in place, put this little tree in there before you try and put the other half on because otherwise you won't get it in there. And then we'll pop the other side on like that. Glue the little uh, pins on this first and then you can worry about the rest of it afterwards. I just want to get this little tree in place and then I can work my way around have a look at how it's fitting together and make any adjustments that I need so I'll glue this from the inside first so we'll shoot a bit along this area here just to let that absorb through and give it a squish do the bigger section first and then I'll worry about the little tail light or the tail section on it should I say once we've uh, got this piece together and this sits under the seat but I still want to try and get it as level as I possibly can so that I don't end up with a big raised lip on one side so time spent on this bit is time saved later on sanding and trying to de-seam something that you could have avoided peeps so bear that in mind just hold that in place until it bites and then I can put a bit in there now and let that piece start welding itself together and all. Same process, line it up with your nails, get it reasonably lined up and then give it a squish. Trying not to drop it like I did. There you go. So let's just have a looky loo now to see which is the next bit that goes on. And it's this little piece here that the uh, back part or the seat cushion, seat stop, basically the bit that sits behind the uh, rider's backside and the rider will push against this as he's riding down the straight with his head under the uh, canopy bubble. 
and it just puts a little bit of weight on the back tyre. So some riders have a big cushion behind them because they're they're shorter. Other riders don't have the cushion; they just press against the bodywork. So they should wonder what they're for. So we're just running the glue along the seam like so, letting it do its thing. Give it a little tiny squish, not too much, just a little tiny one. And as you can see, that's beginning to take shape. So I'll just give the sides a little press just to get rid of any lip, line it up. And then you've got the rear section then that will go on behind this and cover up the little frame underneath. Just like that, see? Look at that. Got to admit, it does look good, doesn't it? So I'll put a bit of glue in there, let this start biting. And again, just do it in, in little, little sections. Get one side to bite and then come back at it. A little bit of extra thin along there and then do the same again like that. And then scoop one right over the bubble like that. And that will start joining itself together nicely. Very delicate little stage this one, but yeah, comes up really nice, doesn't it? Look at that. Whoa. Isn't it, eh? 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 Yeah, you know. Just scoot a bit of glue along there and press that into place. Just like that. Just let them edges start going together and you'll you'll see your little bead squishing out. Just leave it in place. Don't be tempted to run your finger along it if it's too big because you'll end up smudging it all. But just squeeze it out and then you can always come back later on with your sanding stick, folks. Just press that edge up. And already I'm I'm seeing how that's coming together and I'm liking it, so I won't fettle with it too much. There's a tiny little bit that needs to go in. I'll notice there. See if I can find it. And then we'll pop that in place. And that will finish that bit off then. So we'll just check the sprout. See if we can locate it. Sorry for being off shot peeps. But there it is. So let's have a look. See how that slots into place. Like so, there you go, let's just nip off that nub, check with my finger to make sure it's alright. This is the sort of food that the carpet monster likes folks, so be careful with it. Because my carpet monster's next to me and I've just seen him open one eye and stare at me and his tongue's gone across his bottom lip and he's like, yeah, I'll be having that. So he's got his eye on it. So I'm going to quickly glue that in so that the carpet monster can't have it. Like so. There you go. I don't want to do a marcus, do I? And end up having a wibble. Can't be doing that. There you go. Have you some of that. And then just run a bit of glue around the edges. Just like that. Look at that. Oh. Oh yeah. Looks good, doesn't it? I think it does. And I still say it is one of the most beautiful bikes on the MotoGP grid. I really do. Absolutely stunning machine. So we're just resting that in place like so. Like that. Let's have a look in the destructions. See what's next, shall we? And I've got a feeling it's going to be the uh, drip tray and probably some of the side fairings as well. Maybe even a bit of tankage. Oh. So that has gone together really well, peeps. So let's get rid of any nubbage. And then we'll clip this and put it up on the tree 
leave it to dry and then we'll come back and, and clean that all up before it uh, it gets primed. A couple of bits there are pretty much dry so I'll just see how that buffs up because I might be able to do it now. So I'll just quickly test this side and see how it looks. I'm just running a buffing pad along there. Don't want to go too aggressive with a sander at this stage because this is only a tiny, tiny little amount that oozes out. So it's just enough to sit proud that you can go over it with one of these finny stick buffers. And it then brings it all into, into one piece. Just like that. Yeah, already I'm seeing that coming up quite nicely. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. Happy little fester. Again, these sanders you can get hold of through eModels, um, eModels.co.uk. Nip over to their website. Uh, have a look for tools and accessories. Everything I'm using here has been supplied by eModels. All stuff that you can get from eModels. So, happy days. Slap it in your basket. Remember, as Ted would say, it's not yours till you check it out. And you too can be sitting here building along with me. Because you know you want one of these bikes. I know you do. Who doesn't want one of the most beautiful motorbikes built on the MotoGP grip? You put your hands down now, folks. I'm going to just clean this edge up here. Like so. Don't forget, folks, what I said in the instructions. One of the seams does stay there. Just bear that in mind. Because you don't want to have a wibble. That's the point I realise. Ah, yeah, I just, you know, need to check that seam. So, I very nearly made the mistake then. Right, let's start putting together both halves of this tray. Now, this one will have quite a seam underneath it. I've had a look at it. And I, I can almost see, because this is pretty normal on the bikes. This bottom drip tray always has a nasty seam. So you might end up having to break out the sprue goo uh, and, and de-seaming it that way. So sprue goo, for those that don't know, is basically extra thin cement. Um, if you've got a bottle of extra thin and you're down to about a quarter of a bottle and it's, it, it's seen better days, then what you do is you cut little bits of styrene sheet or little bits of sprue, melt it with the extra thin by just cutting the little bits and feeding the bottle, leaving it overnight and it forms like a uh, milky paste and it's basically liquid plastic. So when you have a seam... Uh, like we're all going to have when we join these two together. You let the glue do its thing and then you'll go over it with a bit of sprue goo, leave it for a few days and then you sand the plastic down and that basically gets rid of your seam, folks. So you're using the kit's own plastic to fill the seam. I know, it's clever, isn't it? I call it witchcraft and tomfoolery because it is. It's witchcraft and tomfoolery. But it is magic. And it's great stuff. There's a bottle of it in that uh, glue holder next to me, the yellow and checkered one. Uh, and that's what I've got just off shot, a little bottle of sprue goo, just in anticipation that we'll need it. There is a, a video on my channel how to make sprue goo. So you can have a look at that, folks. But in the meantime, let's just get rid of the nubs on this. Like that. And then we can... Move that out of the way and look to see how this is going to look. So, let's put a bit of extra fin on there. That's a pot of extra fin in the corner there, Carl. I thought that was my sprue goo. But yeah. So, we'll just run a bead of that along there. And I tend to whop a bit on there and then I squeeze this a little bit harder than I normally would the rest of the bits because I want to try and get as much to squeeze out on this as I can because the more plastic that squeezes out at this stage the less sprue go I'm going to put in 
but I've already noticed on this one that when you look at it uh, face on, it dips down like a, a lowercase letter M in the middle. So there's a little channel where the seam is. So that needs to be built up just to bring it back level. So it probably will have to have some sprue goo in there. I can feel it under me nail there. So I could just feel that there's a trench there. So yeah, you probably can see it as well on camera. So this will need a little bit of extra work on this just to get that to go. But for the moment, I'm focusing on just lining up edges, squishing it together, and then I'll run some additional extra thin in a few places just to let it start melting bits. Give it another press and see what we've got. But that probably will be the one bit that needs a bit of uh, a bit of additional sprue glue. And again, I'll run a bead along the inside just to try and melt and let it warm up whilst I do a bit more squishing but there's a tiny tiny little bit squeezing through but it won't be enough to fill that trench so we'll come back at that with a bit of goo once it's all dried up just run a bit along the back part there like that So let's do a bit on the forks and all I'm doing here is you'll see a mould line that runs right down the length of the fork stanchion there and just use a scraper the edge of a blade and just run it along and lose that seam it, it will stick out otherwise because these are going to be black and carbon fibre so that seam's going to be quite prominent so get rid of it at this stage takes a couple of minutes just run your scraper along there pull the seam back go around it with a, a finny stick and it will lose the seam and that's all I'm doing I'm just drawing it along the raised lip and just scribing it down like so like that there you go and then just give it a, a wee sand just to lose any of the edge run your finger across it or your thumb and you'll see then whether or not you need to do any additional work and again time spent at this stage is time saved folks because it will frustrate you if you don't do it so I'm just drawing the sander across just to finish that off and already that seems gone so I'm a lot happier now that I won't have to come back at this later there's nothing worse than painting and then spotting the seam that sticks out like the proverbial blind cobbler's thumb because when the minute you sand it you lose that paint finish so you're going to regret it so I'll just grab it now and yeah you just yeah have you a bit of that so yeah just move that over there feel it feel a tiny little bit with me pad so we'll just come back across there like that and lose that little bit of a seam there Like that and again this is going to get wrapped in carbon fiber at a later stage because it's carbon fiber forks on the suzuki but again i still don't want to seam there i want to try and lose as much of it as possible because it will show through the decal otherwise so we'll get to do that and it'll just make it look a little bit a little bit more fruity You can see quite a bit of plastic comes off when you scrape these seams you know it's quite quite surprising but I find this stage of a build quite therapeutic you know it's late at night I'm sitting here 
chatting to a mate on the webcam whilst filming this and yeah you could just sit there spend a nice evening bit of denubbing bit of filming chat with your mates lovely and just run that over that scene there and then that'll be another fork done it's a tiny tiny little bit just at this top section and I know I'm being fussy, but you will see this bit because it comes up through the headstock right next to or just under the triple tree of the handlebars. So it will notice if you don't do the seeds. It's best to get rid of it all. You know, you might think, oh yeah, that bit ain't going to be seen. You know there's going to be that one angle you look at your build and you're going to spot it. So just get shot of it like that and that is now bringing that up quite nicely and it's it's gone so yeah another piece denubbed ready ready to be primed quite happy with that so that will go on the stick and get ready to be sprayed so I'm gradually building up a little stack now of bits and bobs just spotted another tiny bit there let's get rid of that in there and then that'll be this done like that so that's on the tree we'll build up the brake discs now just check there's a couple of little locating pegs on this. This one has the little disc on the side there that goes in the middle. So you want to line that up. Make sure you're putting it on the correct side as well. There's two tiny, tiny little pegs on it that you, you will struggle to see. But once they locate, it's, it's on there like that. And then that will then join to the actual disc itself. So you've got a couple of locating pins on there as well. Again, check them, check the instructions to make sure you're putting it the correct way round. It does explain it on there. It does tell you to just have a check. And you've got a dab of extra fin around the edges like that. And that'll shoot right round that circle and join that together. Like that. I so want to do brum brum noises but yeah the urge is there because yeah why not same process with this one as we done just now scoot a little bit of extra fin around them edges and you'll see it shoot right round like that there you go a little bit of a press just to get it to start biting done Another one bites the dust. Have you a bit of that? So that's the brake disc done. So we'll put a clip in the middle there. Shove that on the tray. Just like that. And that'll be ready to go in the spray both when we do the painting. Uh, might as well do the clutch. Get that all uh, sorted. And then that will go on a, a pin as well. Just want to buff around the edges. And then we're doing all the finicky little bits and bobs now. Just start gluing them together. Like that. Pop that on there. And this is for the rear coil spring. So just putting the post in, there's a little tiny metal post that goes in through this piece of plastic before you join it together. And then that will buy it and then that will get painted separately. So yeah, this is definitely the stage where you start seeing your bike taking shape on your bench, you know, right? You've got trees full of parts. But there's less and less on the sprue now, so you you kind of 
you start getting a bit excited. I know I do. It's this stage, the build up I love because any modifications or additional bits you can do at this stage. And then you get it primed and, and yeah, it really, really does make it fun. And I get all excited. I've still got that childlike excitement <clears throat> that I had when I was a young lad when I first started building kits and I'll still like it as an adult you know you've got that rush when you get a, a, a new bit because it's shiny new and it's it's a new addition to your stash but yeah you just get that excitement when you're building it and it's what this hobby is all about folks So we'll just glue both halves of that together. Put that to one side. And then we can start figuring out. There's a spring as well that will go with this. That will get painted as well. Metal spring. That will get painted yellow. So we we'll just put the shock absorber up together get that all in place and there's a poly cap in this as well if I remember rightly so keep an eye out for that and that will then let this uh, slide onto that post so just bind it so that it's a resistant fit like that so and then the spring will go between that so we can start sanding the two halves of the fuel tank. Start getting this looking reasonably respectful. Just scrape any nubs, any little bits on there that shouldn't be there. Get rid of them at this stage. And then like I say, you can run your glue around there and any seams you can get shot of. It's worth doing. I think we're going to be quite lucky with this because I think they've cast this or moulded it right where a weld line would be. So we might be lucky. We'll find out when it goes together. But I think we could easily disguise it if we needed to. So and this is a two-tone aluminium and uh, aluminium and gold. Uh, this tank so I might be able if there is a scene to lose it where the two colours transition so we'll have a look we'll see what it's like when it uh, joins together see how we fancy going with it so we'll just run the buffing stick across there like so put that at the back and then we'll do a a little dry fit just to see how we look and I don't actually think that's too bad yeah so we should be reasonably okay there we'll seem there but yeah I've seen worse so yeah I think we might be able to get away with that soon find out we'll put a bit of glue on there in a sec and see how it looks probably be a bit just round on the front edge of there but from what I'm seeing that ain't that bad and like I say I might be able to get um, some of the plastic to squish out with the extra fin so let's join it together and see what we end up with folks so we'll just run some extra fin around it at this stage to press it all together and then we'll just dip at it once it's together just to give it a little bit more of a kick so just give that a press down and yeah there is a, light, a fair old gap there at the front but I think I might get away with it a bit of sprue goo in there or a bit of putty we'll have a look but for the moment, I'm just going to scoot around the outside areas of that scene there. 
and squish that down. Probably, uh, yeah, I might have my paint transition where that is, so I think I could get away with it. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll have that where the gold and silver transition. That'll work for me. Yeah, that one won't, but yeah. Unusual to have a gap like that. But we'll, we can fix it. We can fix that quite happily. Let's just put me cover on me nippers there. I don't want to break the tips of them. Protect them because, yeah, they're quite delicate, them ones. Right, let's have a look. See what we can do with this. Tires. I think we can have a bit of a prime, folks. So I'm just scooting some uh, primer over this. I'm doing um, black primer at the moment. Just scooting across everything, giving it the, a coat of black because I've got titanium silver going over a lot of this. Also, some of the um, caliper parts are going to be black anyway. So I've sped this up. Uh, using a bit of Steino Res primer, just using up some old uh, primer. I've got a load of uh, different primers, um, my UMP primer, all of that. So just scooting over a bit of black on this, just like that, just to give these a coat. Pretty much doing everything that's on this parts tree with the black and i shall shoot that over i'll probably do the same with the body panels as well do a, a black coat because i will then be putting over a metallic silver and then the blue with the uh, ts uh, sprays so i'll probably paint them away from the booth because they are quite potent and this is this booth is in the man cave so i'll probably open up the the front door and give the blue and the silver or the silver and the blue a scoot outside just to get the fumes away from me so we'll have a look we'll see how it goes but for the moment i'm whopping on a bit of primer giving everything a coat of the gloss black primer Trying to get in all the nooks and crannies. Same with the tank. Even though no, that's going to have a gold and a silver. I'm just scooting over it with a black. Just slavering it on there. Get, get it on there. Get it covered. Because again, if I do find any imperfections, I can always sand it back and then come back at it with another coat of primer. So, fingers crossed we should be all right. Same with suspension bits there, get them painted, give everything a coat. So whilst I'm spraying this, uh, don't forget folks, um, you can pop over to my sponsor, eModels, at eModels.co.uk, have a look in store, have a look around their site, uh, any tools, equipment and stuff like that that you may need. Grab yourself one of these Suzuki kits so that you can play catch up and build along with me in the next few episodes all the links for this are in the description of the video if you don't uh, if you don't need it they don't sell it um, yeah so give them a visit they're a lovely bunch of people really have got a hell of a lot of kits in store whether you do tanks cars planes trains whatever you build there is something for everyone in there. Great service, great team of people. And yeah, I'm very privileged to build for them. So I'll just carry on painting this. Get the last bits and bobs done. Get these folks done. Look at that. Wow, isn't it? Eh? Wow. Yeah, that's a really nice bit of forkage there. Same with the stand. 
and it is just literally catching all the edges, catching all the nooks, the crannies, the internal bits, give everything a coat. Let this dry. If you think it needs another coat, go back at it with another coat. But it just gets everything done. It's the same with the engine. The black will just make the silver jump out. So get that all painted. And yeah, I could make an engine noise, could I? Brum, 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 brum. Yeah, you know, you know I had to. There you go. Just try and get all the little gaps, all the little recesses with it. That's why I tend to circle my airbrushes on spraying in the hope that it just catches all the little areas in there. So I just spin it in a little tiny circle just to try and get all the different angles. So that's that lot all, all primed. Give that engine a little coat there because I spotted a couple of bits that needed a little extra. And then we do the same with the body panels there. Come over it like so. Do the inside and the out of the panels. And then you can always come back once you've done your top coats. You can always come back and do the inside of these panels matte black anyway. So, But for the moment they'll all get a coat of the gloss. Scoot that over the bodywork like so. I will spray uh, the silver and the blue um, beginning of the next episode. I want the primer to go off. So we'll start the next episode with a bit of the top coat going down. Might have that in a separate little video in the corner there whilst we do a bit of assembly. We'll see. We'll see how the editing goes, peeps. I'll just finish off with painting these. And getting ready to wrap this episode up. So this is episode two of the Suzuki X Star GSX RR20. Uh, part three will be coming up quite quickly, where I'll be doing the bodywork, top coat, decaling, and probably start doing some of the engine frame assembly and getting the build up of the bike going. So I look forward to seeing you for the next episode many many thanks for all your comments and your support pop over and give the guys at eModels a visit and until the next time i'm going to leave you with a little bit of subtle priming thanks for spending time with me thanks for watching like and subscribe all the details are in the description and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode, people. Take care. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, I can't wait to do the brum brum noises. I really can't wait to do the brum brum noises. Oh no. Oh no. Look at this. Oh, oh. oh look at that. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm easily pleased, and I'm so easily pleased. Goodbye, folks. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye for now.